Hello everybody, this is TechCut, and in this video what we're going to be doing is doing a speed test comparison of some of the more popular Linux distributions that ship with the GNOME desktop environment. So in this video we're going to be going over four different distributions. We're going to be going over Ubuntu, Pop! OS, Manjaro, and Fedora 32. Now this is a follow-up video to one I did about a week ago with all the, almost all the same tests, same kind of format, going over Windows 10, Ubuntu, and Manjaro. This was a popular request because a lot of people thought that the desktop environment, um, distributions with the same desktop environment would have been a much more fair and better comparison and I agreed. So let's get on into it. Now a vast majority of these tests are going to be ran on this old ThinkPad. This is a Lenovo ThinkPad T450 running a Intel Core i5-5300U with 8GB of DDR3 RAM and a 250GB SSD. Later on we're going to be running some benchmark tests on my primary workstation PC which is a custom built PC running a Ryzen 7 3700X, 32GB of DDR4 RAM, a 256GB SSD as well as a GTX 1650 Super. So first I started with just some general speed testing comparing these distributions on the Lenovo ThinkPad, starting with testing the time for a live disk boot. And Pop! OS was a clear winner in this category coming in at 25 seconds with Fedora being the slowest at 52 seconds. Next I tested the speed of installation. Now I know this doesn't really matter because you only need to do this once, but it is still cool to kind of see how long the distributions take. And with this, Manjaro came in the lead with a minute and 53 seconds, with Pop! OS trailing just over a minute behind, and then Fedora taking the longest with 5 minutes and 26 seconds to completely install. Once everything was all done, I went ahead and rebooted the systems to see which one has the best boot time, and that actually ended up being Pop! OS with just about 18 seconds to boot up, followed by Manjaro with 25 seconds, Ubuntu with 27 seconds, and Fedora with 31 seconds. Now a couple of these I was able to skip the login screen completely, but the ones that I was not able to, I didn't count the time I actually spent typing in the password on the login screen. Once in the system, I opened up the file manager for each of the systems to see if there was any significant differences in that application opening, and there was not. Everything was fairly neck and neck. If I do slow down the footage, you do see that that Ubuntu actually had the lead in this one with Pop! OS being the last one to open up the file manager. And with that open, I was able to run a quick file transfer test. I plugged in a USB drive with a large ISO file and a couple other media files and transferred it over to the documents folder on the computer. Again, everything was pretty close when it comes to this. Manjaro did carry a lead with a minute and 33 seconds, followed by a virtual tie with Ubuntu, and then we had Fedora at a minute and 35 seconds, and then Pop! OS at a minute and 37 seconds. Now, opening up media files is when we can start to see some differences. I went ahead and opened up a large resolution image, and opening this gave Manjaro a slight lead over Fedora, followed by Pop! OS and then Ubuntu. And then when we opened up a video file, Manjaro again had a slight advantage over Fedora, and this followed by a virtual tie between Pop! OS and Ubuntu. And then I went ahead and opened up Firefox for the very first time on this system, and at first it looked like Pop! OS was going to have a clear advantage, but Ubuntu and Manjaro ended up loading first, followed by Pop! OS and Fedora lagged behind. And now that we've seen some general side-by-side -side speed test comparisons, let's go ahead and introduce the desktop and compare it to the ThinkPad and all of these distributions and do some benchmarking. Now the first one that we're going to start with is the Kden Live Render Test, and this one is the one that was most important to me because it directly relates to my use case for these distributions. For the Kden Live render testing, I ran a render of the same footage on both systems. On the ThinkPad, I only rendered out 10 seconds, and on the desktop, I rendered out an entire 5 minutes. Both renders were done as a .mp4 with 50% quality output. Everything was fairly close, but Manjaro and Pop! OS both tied at a minute 45 seconds, followed by Ubuntu with a minute and 46 seconds, and Fedora was a little more behind at a minute and 58 seconds. Now the next result really surprised me. On the ThinkPad, Manjaro rendered out a video almost a minute quicker than the second distribution to finish. It rendered that 10 second video at a minute 22 seconds, followed by Ubuntu with 2 minutes and 39 seconds, and then Pop! OS with 2.46, and Fedora with 2.47. Now the GNOME Disk Utility actually has a benchmarking 
tool built in. So I ran some tests with 100 samples and an average sample size of 100 megabytes. The chart you see is listed at average read rate in megabytes followed by the average access time in milliseconds. Both the desktop and the ThinkPad overall had pretty equal performance throughout the distributions, but we can see that the average read rate on Manjaro seems to be a little bit lower, at least on the desktop. Next, we ran some OpenGL benchmarking on all of these distributions. For this, we used GL Mark II. It's a simple OpenGL graphics benchmarking tool that will render out a couple different scenes in order to give you a ballpark idea of your graphics performance. Now, I will note that this test is better to see the difference in older computers as it doesn't really place much stress on modern graphics cards. With the results below, we can see that Manjaro did score better on both the desktop and laptop, and I was having some issues getting this to score properly with Pop OS on the desktop. In my Manjaro versus Pop OS video, we concluded that there is not enough difference to decide a concrete winner when it comes to gaming performance. For our next test, we're going to be looking at overall system and processor performance. And to do this, we are going to be using Geekbench 5. Now, Geekbench is a complete benchmarking tool that allows us to score our multi-core and single-core CPU performance. Now, across the board, there were not many major differences in how these distributions performed, but Fedora overall did see better single-core and multi-core performance on better hardware. There is a reason Fedora is the go-to choice for many developers and many industry professionals. On the ThinkPad, Pop OS and Manjaro did basically tie when it comes to their performance, differing by just a point with multi-core and a direct tie with single core. Ubuntu did score the lowest, but I again will note that these scores are so close to each other that you probably wouldn't notice a difference in standard day-to-day -day computing. Next, we ran Octane 2.0. Now what this is is a benchmark that measures JavaScript engine performance by running a suite of tests representative in certain use cases in JavaScript applications. As you can see down below, Manjaro did perform better on both the desktop and ThinkPad, with Fedora falling behind in these categories. Next, we fired up Basemark Web 3.0, and what this is is a web browser performance benchmark that will run your system through a variety of tests, primarily revolving around web-based applications. This tool helps people measure real-world client-side performance to detect browser bottlenecks. On our desktop, we can see Ubuntu held the lead at a score of 869, with Manjaro falling slightly behind at 857, followed by Fedora, and then Pop OS scored the least in this test. On the ThinkPad, Manjaro did perform the best, trailed closely behind by Ubuntu, and then Pop OS, and then Fedora came in last. Now, a curiosity I had is how much the kernel will affect these results. Since both Pop OS and Fedora have a slightly older kernel, I decided to upgrade them and run some of the standard benchmarks again. With Pop OS, I used Ubuntu Mainline to upgrade the kernel to 5.8, and for Fedora, I just used the 33 beta version, and this was only done on the ThinkPad. I have the results here on the screen comparing Pop OS 5.4 and 5.8 kernels and Fedora 32 and 33. There are some slight differences, but all of these seem to be within a margin of error, as the the Caden Live render times are basically the same. The GNOME disk test is basically identical. GL Mark actually seemed to be a little bit worse on the new kernels. Geekbench overall is fairly close. The one noticeable difference here is on Octane 2.0, Fedora 33 may have a better Java performance, but it's still pretty close. And then Basemark is almost exactly the same as what it was. Essentially, the 5.4 to 5.8 kernel in these cases, don't see dramatic improvements, at least not in official release capacity. You should always use the kernel that either comes with your distribution or whatever kernel they're actively supporting. For example, in the case that I ran, Pop OS does not support the 5.8 kernel yet, so you should stick with what they recommend you use. So overall, the main thing I took away from this is all of these systems are really close when it comes to the neck and neck speed test comparisons and benchmarking, with some differences, Ubuntu seemed to be kind of on the slower end of things. Fedora was really good with uh, CPU performance, probably good at compiling programs, things like that, that would work with developers. Manjaro and Pop OS are both very snappy, great distributions. Now, a speed test comparison like the one we just saw should not be the deciding factor in what Linux distribution you end up going with. But if you have narrowed it down to a couple different choices, this might be a contributing factor that you might want to look at.
Ultimately, if you are looking for dramatic shifts in performance without actually upgrading your hardware, you're going to want to take a look at a lighter desktop environment such as LXQT or even XFCE, but even on this older hardware, GNOME seems to work completely fine. Now, in the future, I will be doing more speed test videos like this and maybe even adding more benchmarking tests, especially as I go and improve the content on this channel. So if you do have any specific requests, please leave them down below. I know I'm going to be doing almost this exact same thing with KDE to see if there are any dramatic differences across the distributions. Other than that, make sure you subscribe because I do upload content on the regular. I hope you have a great day and goodbye.